Hey, I'm Jamie. I'm a fifth semester veterinary medicine student, and this week I'm doing my vlog a little bit differently. In three days is my first ever live animal procedure, so myself along with two of my classmates are going to be putting a sheep under anesthesia. Uh, so I'm going to take you along on this like milestone in my veterinary medicine education. So my group and I met up the other day to divide up kind of the rules so we knew who was responsible for doing what and this way hopefully everything will go smoothly. So we decided that of the three big exciting parts, which would be giving the IM pre-medication injection, placing the IV catheter, and then intubation, we decided who would be doing which of those. We felt like those were the three like biggest, most exciting things to be doing, so it would be fair to give one to each of us. Um, so I'm going to be placing the IV catheter, which means I need to go over sterile gloving because it's a jugular catheter, so it's a sterile procedure. And then I need to go over actually placing that catheter. I also, I'm not giving the IM injection, but I think it would be a good thing just to review. I need to look over that. I need to look over a little bit of ovine anatomy. Um, but I think today I'm going to start with sterile gloving and the catheter placement. So that way I can go to the clinical skills lab. Um, it's next door to the lab that I have scheduled this morning. So I figure it's just easy to do them both at once. All right, gloves are on. Um, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with how that went. Um, I feel like it went pretty well. These gloves are a size too big. I wear a six and a half, these are a seven, um, but they're all I had to practice with. So hopefully it'll go just as smoothly on Monday, um, but I'm, I'm feeling good about that. All right, let's go to the anesthesia annex. So in the anesthesia annex, I set up the anesthetic machine completely from scratch, so nothing was, no tubing was on it, it wasn't attached to central oxygen, it wasn't attached to the scavenger system, so I made sure that I went through, I set up everything properly, made sure everything was connected so that the patient can get oxygen and anesthetic gas, but none of that anesthetic gas can get into the room. Then once it was fully set up, I performed a leak test to make sure that there was no leaks anywhere in the circuit. The monitoring equipment, so I just turned on the monitoring, machine and then I made sure that I knew where all of the leads attached. So the monitoring equipment that we are using for this lab is we're using a SpO2 monitor, also known as a pulse ox. We are using a capnograph, so that's going to measure the amount of carbon dioxide that the patient is breathing out. We're using an EKG. We're using a blood pressure that is attached to that machine, as well as a blood pressure on a Doppler where that you read independently. Um, so that's not hooked up to this machine. And then a temperature probe also hooks up to this machine. And now I have moved over from the anesthesia annex to the clinical skills lab. So here I have already opened my sterile glove package and I'm using that as my sterile field to drop all of my supplies into. So I've placed in a catheter, I'm putting in a catheter cap, I need a needle and I also need a piece of suture so that I can tie in that catheter. I then sterile glove up and I proceed to place the catheter. So on sheep, the catheter that we place for general IV access is a jugular catheter. And so because it's a central catheter, this has to be done as a sterile procedure. The needle with the catheter goes into the jugular vein on the neck. And then once that needle is in, I push the stylet of the catheter, or I push the catheter off of the stylet of the needle. And then I use surgical hand ties to sew that catheter in place to the skin on the neck. This way we have consistent IV access. It is Saturday, it's 9 a.m. So I'm meeting with my sheep anesthesia group in an hour and we're going to fill out our soap form and our anesthetic record for the sheep we've been assigned. And so we can go into the soap room and his medical record will be there waiting for us. That's so the plan for this morning is to get all of that and get through like all of the sheep anesthesia content because um, I have an exam on Tuesday in every single one of my classes. So this way I can spend this afternoon working on my summary notes for my exam, spend most of tomorrow studying, tomorrow night prepping sheep anesthesia again, and then the sheep anesthesia is on Monday. So hopefully, hopefully we did.
I just got back from meeting with my group, so we got a little bit of background information on our sheep, so the, most, the physical exam that it had when it got here, um, it had some blood work runs, so we know the results of that, um, and then we know how much it weighs, and so that's everything that we need in order to fill out our soap form. So I'll show you what that looks like. I obviously can't show you the filled out one because that's got patient information. So this is the soap form that we use. So it just, we needed to fill out our patient's information, what procedure is happening, our names as the anesthetist, and then the overseeing anesthesiologist's name will go there. Um, there's no surgeon because we're just doing the anesthesia. And then this is where the whole physical exam goes in, including blood work. Um, so everything was normal on our sheep. And then we're gonna give it an ASA status. So that's its risk under anesthesia based on how like the status of the patient. So because there was nothing wrong with our patient, everything on physical exam and blood work was normal. He gets an ASA status one, lowest risk. And then we listed out any possible anesthetic complications. And then we went through and we did our anesthetic plan. So what pre-medications are we giving? What induction drugs are we giving? How are we maintaining anesthesia? We're gonna use isofluorine. And then we had to calculate out what the total blood volume is and uh, what amount of IV fluids we're running, and then we calculated all of our emergency drugs just in case, and we just circled all the monitoring equipment that we're going to be using. Hello, it is now 6 p.m. on Sunday, um, so my sheep anesthesia is tomorrow morning at 9.15. So right now I'm just watching some videos on how to do a physical exam on a sheep. This was a lab that we had last semester, so I've just opened back up Canvas from last semester and I'm going to review that content. And then I have a list of lectures and topics. Excuse me, don't eat electrical cords. Look at the devil. Look at the bad rat. Are you rotten? Are you rotten? Are you bad? Anyway, I pulled up the videos from last semester on Canvas to watch on the ovine physical exam. So I'm gonna watch those. And then I have a list of lectures that I think have like relevant content. So I wanna go over our sheep specific anesthesia lecture. I wanna go over our lecture on monitoring. I wanna go over our lecture on um, like all the ins and outs of the anesthetic machine. I wanna go over, um, hey, how to properly evaluate your patient in advance of a procedure. And then our lecture on recovering a patient. And then I wanna go through my notes specifically on all the drugs that we will be using. So that's the plan for the rest of the night, even though I have a ton of block studying to do, um, but we'll get some stuff done. All right, I'm done reading through every relevant lecture, I think, should be. Um, so I'll show you what I made up. So this is the, it'll focus, pretty much the to-do list of like steps and everything that needs to happen. So I've just gone through and like written them out in, a decent amount of detail and then we just initialed who is doing which step um, so that hopefully it's a little bit less chaotic tomorrow so I'll print that out and keep it on our clipboard tomorrow and then what I'm more excited about is I made this little information sheep or sheep all I can think about is sheep information sheets um, and so I just have our normals that we should be looking for what we're going to see on our blood gas analysis what those normals are uh, what we're going to see with our anesthetic when we're monitoring anesthetic depth um, a couple of like facts that I didn't know where to put that I wanted to keep on there a little diagram for where to find the median vein or sorry median artery to place our doppler um, ruminants have a type b heart so their ekg looks a little bit different than what we're used to so I just put a normal ekg there for reference um, all of the drugs that we're using in their doses and then the complications for the ones we're using and indications for the emergency drugs and then I have the oxygen flow rate and the fluid rate um, and then I have any potential complications we might have and then instructions for some of the skills that just have a little bit more that I didn't want to put on the checklist um, so what supplies do we need for the IV catheter supplies we need for induction and intubation um, the instructions for where to give the intramuscular injection and then just a couple notes so that we don't forget anything on physical exam so all of that is nice and pulled together and gonna get printed off on that I've gone through everything I'm gonna read through this sheet again to make sure that it's all in my brain um, in a little bit but I think I'm gonna try to do some block studying before then um, I probably won't check in again tonight but you'll see me tomorrow when I get ready and I'll show you what I'm bringing for my sheep anesthesia and then we'll head over there good morning it is sheep anesthesia day so I'm in scrubs um, I'm just making breakfast. It's 8.30. I need to leave in like 15 minutes, but that should be good. So I'll just show you what I'm bringing. So 
Um, I'm in scrubs. I'm gonna bring my white coat and then I need a pair of running shoes and a pair of paddock boots for when we go get our sheep. So lots of stuff to bring today, um, but I'm bringing my stethoscope obviously. I have a thermometer and then we need a pair of bandage scissors and pens. So that's what I have. They just always live in here and a watch. Um, here is a clip of the sheep in their catching pen before the procedure. And this is a clip of our sheep being walked back to the pen after he's had his procedure. And you can see that he is bright and alert and definitely awake and doing well. So I've just gotten back from the sheep anesthesia lab and I'm really happy with how everything went. I feel like it went well. Um, you know, there were some hiccups, like our sheep kept flailing and ripping its catheters out, um, but I successfully placed two that the sheep then ripped out. <laughs> Um, Tech ended up having to help us induce off of the needle because we were like halfway induced when the catheter popped out, but everything went really well. And then the tech halfway through looked at me and went, you've worked as a tech, haven't you? And that's like, honestly, the biggest compliment that I could have had because I have not like trained as a tech. I worked as a kind of an assistant position at a techless practice that kind of straddled into tech category and I'm very comfortable monitoring anesthesia. I feel like that was probably the thing I was strongest at coming into vet school. Um, that was a really good compliment. I'm really pleased about that. So it went well. So it's like 1230 now. So I have like three and a half hours to study before I have to go do a physical exam and check on my sheep. All right, scrubs are back on. So I'm about to go um, do what we call a soap on our anesthetic sheep. I'm back from soaping, so our sheep looks great. He was out in the paddock eating with his friends and when we tried to grab him so that we could do a physical exam, he took off running. So definitely bright and alert and responsive. Um, his catheter sites look great. There's no bruising, which is perfect. And, you know, he's eating and he's peeing and it's, all of his vitals were normal. So he's looking great. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. And so that wraps up my uh, first live animal procedure. Uh, so I'm hoping to do more videos kind of like this, less weekly. Well, I might still do weekly vlogs, not that I do so many, but I'm hoping to do some vlogs of specific um, milestone procedures that I'm gonna do in vet school. I know I have a lot in seventh semester. I'm not sure if there are any in sixth, um, but this was the big one for fifth semester and I'm very excited that I got to document it. Um, so if you wanna see more videos like this, you can go ahead and click subscribe.